So far in our discussion on Gregor Mendel's Principles of Inheritance, we focused on a type of law that is known as Mendel's Law of Segregation. Now we're going to move on to the second law that was devised by Gregor Mendel that became known as Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment. Now let's begin by actually stating what the law tells us. Well, the law states that members of one gene pair will separate from one another independently of the members of other gene pairs found within that same organism. And to demonstrate what we mean by this law of independent assortment, let's take a look at the following organism, a pea plant. And we're focusing on a heterozygous pea plant. So this pea plant is heterozygous for two different traits. One trait is the height and the other trait is the color of the seeds. Remember the seed color, the green seed color is dominant over the yellow seed col uh, color while the tall height is dominant over the short height. So because we're looking at a heterozygous individual for two different traits, that means the phenotype of this plant will be tall and green. So we have our dominant gene for the color, uppercase G, and the recessive lowercase g. We have the uppercase T, that is the dominant gene for the height trait, and then we have the recessive lowercase t. So we have green uppercase G, we have um, orange yellow case G, the blue uppercase T, and the purple lowercase t. Now, if we examine the somatic cell of this particular pea plant, and we're only focusing on the chromosomes that carry these genes, we're going to get the following diagram. So within the nucleus of our somatic cell, this is what we're going to get. So we have one homologous chromosome, and we have a second homologous chromosome. Now, within this homologous chromosome pair, we have one of the chromosomes that carries the uppercase G, and the other chromosome within this homologous pair carries the lowercase G. In this other homologous pair, we have one of the chromosomes carries the uppercase T, and the other chromosome carries the lowercase T. Now, the reason that we have the law of independent assortment in the first place is because of the process of meiosis that takes place when this individual, when the organism forms gametes before fertilization actually takes place. So to see how that actually is, let's look at the meiosis process as it takes place within this particular organism. So before meiosis one can actually begin, this cell must undergo interphase. And during the process of interphase, we have replication taking place. So each one of these individual chromosomes within the chromosome pair are replicated. So this chromosome is replicated and so is this chromosome replicated. Likewise, this chromosome is replicated and this chromosome is replicated. And at the end, we produce the following cell. So these are basically our two homologous chromosomes and these are also two homologous chromosomes. But the difference between this case and this case is each one of these actually consists of identical chromatids we call cystochromatids. So if we zoom in on this picture, we basically get the following diagram. So this is a homologous pair of chromosomes, and this is also a homologous pair of chromosomes. But within each one of these pairs, we now have identical cystochromatids. So this chromosome is identical to this one, and this one is identical to this one, but these two are homologous with respect to one another. So Remember, what we mean by homologous is they carry similar genes. They carry similar genes that code for proteins that express the same type of trait. So in this particular uh, case, we have the genes uppercase G and lowercase G that express the same type of trait, the color trait. And in this case, we have these two genes that are homologous. And what that means is they code for proteins 
protein that expresses the same type of trait, in this case, the high trait. So we have one homologous chromosome pair, a second homologous chromosome pair, and now each one of these chromosomes actually consists of two identical cystochromatids. So this is what we have following DNA replication that takes place during interphase before meiosis actually begins. Now let's suppose meiosis actually begun and now we're at the stage we call uh, metaphase one of meiosis. So during metaphase one of meiosis what happens is these homologous pair of chromosomes actually arrange themselves along the equator of the cell. So if this is the equator of the cell this is how the homologous chromosomes are going to arrange themselves. So we're basically going to have this homologous pair of chromosomes like so, and this homologous pair of chromosomes like so. Now this is where we have to discuss the law of independent assortment. So what the law of independent assortment actually takes, uh, actually tells us is, the members of one gene pair separate from one another independently of the members of the other gene pairs. So these two will separate independently of these two and likewise these two will uh, separate or segregate independently of these two. And what that means is within the cell these two can be arranged like so or they can actually be switched because that's what we mean by these being independent to the movement of these. So it turns out about 50% of the cells have this arrangement, but the other 50% of the cells actually could also have this arrangement. So these uppercase T's can be on this side, and these lowercase T's can be on this side, or we can have this. And these two, as we'll see in just a moment, will actually produce different types of gametes. So let's carry out the process of meiosis for this particular cell type. In this particular case, uh, if at metaphase one of meiosis we have this arrangement, then what happens is these will separate to opposite poles, then cytokinesis takes place, and we form the following two cells. So we have cell number one and cell number two. So this is a where reduction of the chromosome number took place. In this case, we have the 2N number. In this case, we have the haploid number, 1N. So these two went to one cell producing this cell, these two went to another cell producing this cell. And now this is what we have in metaphase two of meiosis. And now once again we have segregation or separation of these cystochromatids which are actually identical take place. So we have the separation take place and now we form the following two cells. So one of the cells will carry the uppercase, uh, uppercase G, uppercase T to form this somatic, um, this gamete sex cell. Then these two will go to this side, will produce this gamete, this sex cell. And in this particular case, because we're not taking into consideration the process of crossing over, these two are identical. In the same exact way, these two cystochromatid moly, uh, this, these two cystochromatid chromosomes, so we have one pair and a second pair, will separate and will form these two gametes. So we have uppercase G, uppercase T, lowercase G, lowercase T. Now let's suppose that instead of beginning with this arrangement, we have this arrangement of the chromosomes along the equator. So all we did was basically switch these two. And this is true as a result of the law of independent assortment. Or actually what we say is, what we say is because these can switch back and forth and 50% will be in this arrangement and 50% will be in this arrangement, we call this process the law of independent assortment. So this is the biological reason, the biological basis for the existence of the law of independent assortment as was devised, as was described by Gregor Mendel following his experiments with pea plants. So if this takes place, these will separate to produce this cell. 
and this will be a derangement of these chromosomes during metaphase two of meiosis. And now these will segregate uh, as well. So these will go to one, these will go to another one, producing uppercase, uppercase G, lowercase t, and these will go to separate sides, producing lowercase g, uppercase t. So these are the possibilities, the genotypes for the gametes that are formed for this particular heterozygous pea plant. So we have four different types of genotypes. So we have uppercase G, uppercase T, this possibility. We have lowercase G, lowercase T, this possibility. We have uppercase G, lowercase G, this possibility and lowercase g, uppercase t, this possibility, this possibility. And this, and this is the same exact thing that we see when we carry out the Punnett square for this particular individual, this particular plant. So once again, we see that the law of independent assortment takes place during this process, metaphase two of meiosis. And what it basically means is the chromosome pairs, homologous chromosomes that organize themselves into this arrangement at the equator basically can organize themselves independently of the other genes that are found within that same organism. So what that means is the members of one gene pair so these guys here will separate independently of the, mem uh, of the members of the other gene pairs of these guys right here. And so we can have this type of arrangement or because they're independent of one another, we can also have this type of arrangement. These are no way linked to these. And this is what we mean by the law of independent assortment and it takes place as a result of meiosis during the formation of gametes.